sense of it. But what she said as she left was, if you only paint landscapes, if you only painted landscapes, in other words, what to do with these. It doesn't fit into a world of entertainment, a world of fashion, a world of being up with a Joan world is as far removed, the fashion world is as far removed from the worlds of saints as it possibly can be. But I don't feel it's just saints because I find uh, only a, a certain difference in kind in the experience of painting saints than painting landscape or still life, uh, as you see here, or the nude human figure, which I care greatly about. This, a, this man, Norman Ader, who is a dancer, a choreographer, he worked with Alwyn Nikolai and with a friend and companion of Michael Ballard, who was Murray Lewis's dance captain. And uh, I did a portrait of Norman. And in the course of it, he was very, very interested in St. Francis. And he is all of the St. Francis uh, the subjects in, in this exhibition. And he wanted me to paint him as St. Francis. And I feel it's very, very much a, a, a dance picture, of a feeling of a movement that really only a dancer could have done that. And what happened was that uh, I read Katzenzakis, and I became, became interested in saints. And I must say I was about 40 when this painting was done. And uh, at the age of 40, I remember saying to my Quaker godmother that I thought the credentials of all the saints should be uh, questioned and challenged. And uh, so it was a real discovery to begin to read and find out that there are indeed such a thing as saints. And what really uh, clinched it further was the next painting in the sequence here, which is of Saint Therese of Lisieux. My daughter Catherine has uh, posed for uh, all of the other saints, all of the women and female saints in this exhibition. But Norman Ader really was instrumental in determining the gesture, the pose. And Saint Therese of Lisieux, who died at the age of 27, was the most extraordinary uh, human being. I read her little way. I read uh, the Catholic the excerpts of the Catholic proof of uh, being a saint. And at the same time, I had just been reading Ulysses Grant's memoirs, which uh, Edmund Wilson considers, along with Tacitus, to be the greatest military history ever written. And the biography of uh, General Pershing, who was the American general of the, of the First World War, and I found in St. Therese of Lisieux more of the military virtues, more fortitude, more courage, more obedience, more of everything than I had in these great uh, uh, military figures. So the scales fell off my eyes and I began to discover that there were all kinds of saints and they were as different as they could be, but they all had certain qualities in common, a quality of focus and uh, uh, a centeredness that was anything but self-centered, or maybe you can say that it's God-centered, but uh, getting empty of themselves, they allowed something else, another dimension to happen. Very interesting to have discovered this through the act of painting. The reading was, uh, uh, in, in a way, well, let's say it went hand in hand with the actual painting process. Because painting a saint is not like painting another person nude or clothed. I found in these pictures that I had to absolutely uh, strip away everything that had to do with it. It was, it was extraneous. And I couldn't, I used only these two uh, models uh, because I couldn't find anybody else. At one point my daughter had to go away or something happened and I, I hired somebody from the Brooklyn Museum Art School where I was teaching. And she came in with fingernail polish. And the conversation was banal in some kind of way that made me get fussy with all of the folds of the drapery instead of the great severe masses of the drapery 
uh, that were necessary. I became unfocused, and that happened with another model who was uh, actually in Norman's uh, children's theater company. Uh, I couldn't work with it. So it takes very much a certain kind of focus. Bernadette, and uh, many people when they look at it say, is she dead or is she alive? And in point of fact, St. Bernadette was incorruptible, and there was a period of time in which the, the body did not decay. There was a photograph, which I based this painting on, of her, uh, incorruptible, uh, more or less in this position, in a glass coffin. And my daughter, Catherine, posed for this. So I leave the question open uh, about what state she's in. She's, she's both. And I felt in the background uh, the River Gough, which flows past the grotto where, where uh, Bernadette had these visions of the Virgin. The thing that makes her a saint is not so much the visions, in my way of thinking, is the life she led afterwards, because she was just a peasant uh, girl. She had no uh, training, really, intellectual uh, schooling or anything of that sort, and she was really, I think, persecuted is the right thing to say by uh, people in the church to try to break her, her story. She had a simplicity, and, uh, and then she had a tuberculosis, tuberculosis of the bone, and she died of that, and that was, uh, it was a, a, a very extraordinary life post her sainthood. So, if I can refer to the Frank Stella interview of 1972, which I saw the other day and spoke to you about, uh, what was admirable about that is he describes how he responded to the excesses of abstract expressionism, the, the fact that a lot of bad painting was coming out in which instead of it being a gesture, it was the painting of the gesture, do you see, instead of being the gesture itself and some of the followers in the uh, painting and he wanted to get rid of all of that and he wound up by becoming very severe very flat those were those black paintings he was seeking to be absolutely uh, uh, flat uh, I am every bit as abstract in my approach to painting as Frank Stella or Rothko or any of these people uh, the thing that I abstract is from the appearance of the nature and uh, I'm dealing with the same materials that of course they are it's only paint on a flat surface, period, nothing else. Shapes of color on a flat surface. Shapes of possessed dimension, uh, posture, deviation from the world, vertical, things of that sort. And that may be hard to, for people to see because they're not trained in it. The, the layman is not trained in it, but this is the these paintings have been have had a greater response than any show I've ever had, uh, partly because it is St. Francis College, and they know what a saint is, and what the response is, and this is, and this is from people on the staff, the president of the college, uh, uh, Brendan Dugan, students, people that have come in outside, is they're responding to the energy. What I'm really abstract, abstracting and what I'm good at is the energy. And these are subjects uh, which are not recapitulations of past images of saints. They, 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 they are getting across with, with a, with in, a, in a milieu in which there is some experience with saints and in some cases a considerable experience in how they have been represented. These are saints that are completely contemporary. They are as contemporary as Frank Stella or any non-figurative uh, painter, do you see? Now where do we go from that?